Number 10. The USS Connecticut The USS Connecticut is one of the U.S. Navy's most advanced nuclear submarines. At any given time, a crew of 100 people and less than a dozen officers are aboard the 353-foot-long Seawolf-class sub, which has been sailing the world's ocean since the late 90s. While the ship itself is pretty spectacular, it's led a rather interesting life since its commission. In 2003, the Connecticut surfaced through the Arctic ice near the North Pole. A polar bear came by and gnawed on the rubber before continuing on its way. The following year, the sub took to the sea to serve in the War on Terror. It returned to the Naval Submarine Base in New London, Connecticut several months later and spent the next three years undergoing rigorous maintenance. In 2007, the vessel was transferred to Naval Base Kitsap Bremerton in Washington's Puget Sound. It underwent an extensive overhaul from 2012 to 2017 after being used in an Arctic training exercise. The submarine made headlines in 2020 when it became infested with bedbugs. An anonymous source told papers that the pests became an obvious problem by spring of 2020, but nothing was done even as crew members began to complain that the bugs were practically eating them alive. Meanwhile, the Navy claimed that there were no serious health problems caused by the bugs, just a few bites here and there. Finally, months after they first appeared, the bedbugs were exterminated. But the Connecticut's luck took another bad turn last October when it crashed into an underwater mountain in the South China Sea. The boat's commander, executive officer, and chief were relieved from command after an investigation found that they fell short of safety standards. At last update, the sub was undergoing repairs in Washington. Number 9. Chemical Agent Resistant Coatings as part of an ongoing project that explores ways to easily clean military equipment, the U.S. Defense Threat Reduction Agency DTRA, is developing paint-like coatings that temporarily shield equipment from chemical warfare agents CWAs. This better enables the military to recover assets and resume normal operations after a chemical agent attack. Historically speaking, military equipment technology is focused on coatings that protect against rusting and provide a camouflage effect. But until now, little attention has been paid to resisting chemical agents with these coatings. The goal is to develop temporary overcoats that troops can spray, brush, or wipe onto their equipment and that last for at least six months before the solution needs to be reapplied. In addition to protecting against dangerous chemicals, the ideal product would make the decontamination process easier. DTRA is working on the project in collaboration with numerous other government organizations and industry partners, including the Naval Research Laboratory, the Army Research Laboratory, and the Combat Capabilities Development Command Chemical Biological Center. They've experimented with several materials so far, including strippable overcoats and ways to incorporate repellency into existing coatings. The newly developed products last for more than eight weeks in typical environmental conditions and reduce the absorption of chemicals by anywhere from five-hold to a hundred-fold, according to officials. As chemical warfare risks have increased, this innovative solution could make a huge impact. What other uses do you think chemical-resistant coatings could serve? Share your thoughts in the comments. Number 8. The Beast of Kandahar The RQ-170 Sentinel, better known as the Beast of Kandahar, is a top-secret stealth drone that the U.S. Air Force has been using since 2005. It was developed by Skunk Works, which is the same Lockheed Martin division responsible for the F-22 Raptor, F-117 Nighthawk, F-35 Lightning II, and other iconic military aircraft. Little is known about the RQ-170, which is believed to be a high-altitude and stealthy reconnaissance platform used for highly classified missions. The U.S. military has used the device to spy on Iran and to scope out Osama bin Laden's residence before the 2011 raid that ended in the Al-Qaeda leader's death. It gained its nickname as the Beast of Kandahar after appearing on a runway in the southern Afghanistan province in 2007. The Air Force formally acknowledged the drone's existence in 2009, but has kept quiet about the technology it's equipped with. Some speculate that the Beast of Kandahar may not have the most advanced technology that exists, but that it's favored for its cost-effectiveness. It's been reported that the drone's per-unit cost may be as little as $6 million, which would make it attractive to the military as a low-cost machine with high capabilities. In 2011, Iranian state television aired footage of an RQ-170 that it claimed had been captured by the Islamic Revolutionary Guard while performing surveillance of the country's nuclear efforts. U.S. defense officials denied these claims and said that it was extremely unlikely that Iranian intelligence hacked the drone and brought it down for a landing. But they offered no explanation for how and why a seemingly intact RQ-170 ended up in Iranian hands. Number 7. Phaser The Personnel Halting and Stimulation Response Rifle, or Phaser, is a non-lethal laser rifle designed to stun an enemy without causing serious or permanent harm. A prototype was developed at the Air Force Research Laboratory in New Mexico with the purpose of temporarily blinding and disorienting the target. Blinding weapons were banned under a 1994 United Nations protocol, but the policy's wording does not prohibit temporarily blinding weapons. 
Before the development of the phaser, the main problem with weapons of its type was their tendency to cause permanent blindness, according to Tobias Fieken of Bradford University's Non-Lethal Weapons Project in the UK. The phaser rifle was a game changer because it's less harmful, although it can still cause eye problems when it's used at close range or for an extended period. To counter this problem, the US Department of Defense has proposed something called an eye-safe rangefinder, which would adjust the laser's power based on its distance from the target. Rumor has it that the phaser rifle is named after the phaser weapon in Star Trek, which similarly had lethal and non-lethal settings. What do you think of this piece of equipment? Is it an ethical solution? Let us know in the comments down below. Number 6. Adaptive Camouflage Developed by Swedish defense security company BAE Systems, Adaptive Camouflage masks a military vehicle's infrared signature from far infrared night vision devices, enabling it to go undetected by an enemy's thermal imaging systems. The material consists of around 1,000 hexagonal panels covering the sides of the vehicle, which are heated and cooled to match the temperature of the surrounding environment. In addition to helping the vehicle evade enemy detection, Adaptive Camouflage is capable of mimicry and can be set to imitate a chosen object such as a car. This reduces the vehicle's range of detectability to just 1,640 feet, meaning the enemy would have to get pretty close to pick up on its presence. The system also allows the operator to snap thermal images of the vehicle's surroundings and it has an armored effect. It was originally designed for tracked combat vehicles and a lighter version for helicopters is in the works. Number 5. X-51A Wave Rider During the 1990s, the U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory started the high-tech program for hypersonic propulsion with the goal of developing a missile capable of traveling at six times the speed of sound, or around 4,000 miles per hour. In 2004, designers began to work on the Boeing X-51A Wave Rider, which implemented a hydrocarbon-fueled scramjet engine from a canceled NASA project. The first two test flights were unsuccessful. In 2013, the Wave Rider flew for over 6 minutes, traveling at speeds of over Mach 5 for 210 seconds. It was the longest duration hypersonic powered flight to date. In past flight demonstrations, a B 52 carried the Wave Rider to an altitude of around 50,000 feet before releasing it over the Pacific Ocean, where it blasted to record speeds with the help of a rocket booster. The vehicle is nicknamed the Wave Rider because it was designed to ride its own shockwave, which is why its wings are so small. Its engine is capable of burning atmospheric oxygen, eliminating the need for large fuel tanks seen on conventional rockets. The X-51A was once considered a stepping stone to DARPA's Black Swift project, which was cancelled in 2008. But it was successful enough to remain under development to pave the way for future hypersonic weapons and intelligence. Four wave riders were made for the U.S. Air Force as research vehicles for further development. What purposes do you think these wave riders can serve in a conflict? Share your theories in the comments and make sure to subscribe to the channel as well. Number 4. Defense Trucks Military trucks are designed to transport personnel, supplies, and equipment in dangerous and challenging environments. These vehicles seem rather straightforward and basic, but they need to be reliable in order to effectively support military operations and are equipped with advanced technology and capabilities. They come in many different sizes and are tailored to their intended use. Last year, the Army released a list of requirements for its common tactical truck, CTT. There will be fine variants including on- and off-road models. Unlike the current fleet, which lacks commonalities that would facilitate the implementation of new technologies, the new CTT variants will have as many similarities as possible while still being able to perform their respective tasks. This will make it easier to upgrade the technology as things like artificial intelligence, machine learning, autonomous operations, driver safety systems, and predictive maintenance and diagnostics improve. The Army is taking bids from different manufacturers who will compete for a contract to produce between 7,000 and 10,000 CTTs to replace the outdated model, which has been in use for over 40 years. Other militaries are updating their truck fleets with the help of German manufacturer Rheinmetall, which recently delivered a shipment of its HX-44M heavy recovery vehicles, HRV, to the New Zealand Defence Force. The updated model has a nearly 5-foot fording depth and a sophisticated self-recovery system. It can climb slopes with a grade of up to 60% and has a maximum speed of 60 miles per hour, which is pretty fast for a truck of its size. The HX-44M is the first HRV to use an integrated armored swap cabin, which enables its operators to easily reconfigure it for different operational needs. Rheinmetall is already working on its third-generation variant of the vehicle, which will include an advanced driving assistance system that will reduce driver fatigue and intervene during moments of inattentiveness. Number 3. Active Denial System in 2015, Boeing received a patent to develop technology to protect military vehicles from shockwaves following explosions from missiles and improvised explosive devices, or IEDs. 
Known as the Active Denial System ADS, and nicknamed the Heat Ray, it builds on earlier technology that uses a combination of electricity, lasers, and microwaves to fire a beam at its target. Simply put, it works similarly to a microwave but uses shorter and higher frequency waves. The beam only penetrates the top layer of skin but will continuously burn the target as long as it's applied. It took just three seconds for most human test subjects to reach their pain threshold, and none of the subjects could tolerate the exposure for more than five seconds. The rate at which the target's surface temperature increases depends on what the target is and how far it is from the transmitter, as well as the beam's frequency and power level which are set by the operator. An Air Force Research Laboratory spokesperson and test subject described feeling like he was on fire and then feeling fine again as soon as he was away from the beam. There have been a few incidents that left test subjects with second-degree burns, including one individual who spent two days in the hospital, but it's rare to experience an effect this severe. The weapon was deployed by the U.S. military in 2010 for use in the Afghanistan war, but it never saw combat and was withdrawn. During the same year, the Los Angeles Sheriff Department announced plans to use the technology to control inmates and break up fights at a local detention center. As a non-lethal weapon with high effectiveness and a low probability of injury, the active denial system is a good alternative to more dangerous applications of force. Number 2. Black Knight ARCV The Black Knight is a prototype unmanned ground combat vehicle that looks similar to a tank. It weighs 12 tons and can be airlifted and deployed from a Lockheed C-130 Hercules cargo plane. The vehicle was designed for use on all types of terrain in day or night missions that are deemed too dangerous for manned vehicles. It can operate autonomously or be driven from inside another vehicle via its robotic operator control station. An advanced perception system enables the Black Knight to detect and avoid obstacles, and its autonomous navigation system is capable of planning routes according to either directness or the lowest terrain risk. When the vehicle detects a lethal object in its path, it stops. Developed by BAE Systems, the Black Knight began as a project called the Armed Robotic Demonstrator. It made its first public appearance in 2006 at the Association of the United States Army in Washington, D.C. The vehicle received a lot of attention, leading to the addition of its remote operation capability. Its ability to keep soldiers out of harm's way while transmitting information could lead to improved safety and better planning on the battlefield. The Black Knight is currently being evaluated by the U.S. Army. Number 1. Thunder Generator Known as a sonic blaster, the thunder generator produces deafening explosions by firing high-speed shock waves through people. It was first used by Israeli farmers as a harmless yet effective way to scare away crop-eating birds and other pests. Last year, Israel's Ministry of Defense approved a license for the technology company Armitech to develop a military version of the weapon for use in crowd control and border security. The thunder generator combines liquid petroleum gas with air and then detonates the mixture, causing a series of ear-splitting blasts. As the fuel exits the cannon barrel, it produces dozens of rapid-fire high-velocity shock bursts which can be calibrated for different uses. The weapon is capable of firing between 61 and 100 bursts per minute, producing extreme air pressure that acts as a deterrent in addition to the sonic boom it creates. Army Tech claims that these off-putting effects don't do any long-term damage to people as long as no one comes within 33 feet of it, which can cause serious injury or death. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.